Alrighty, everybody. I'm sitting here with Fred Habit. Welcome home, Fred. Good to be home. Good, Good to be have home. you. Yeah. So I was just joking with Fred. We actually got some stuff for the first time in a while, and I told him he brought it all home with him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of people are familiar with your music. They're familiar with your career over the span of a few generations now. But I don't know that a lot of people know about your upbringing, where you brought up in the church, and what really led you to the ministry of music. Well, my mom was, um, she was a traveling musician. She would teach choirs in the greater Detroit Metroplex area, but they were storefronts and she just knew how to bring the passion out of wherever she was. And she drug me around to that. Me and my brothers had to go sit while she went to rehearsal, you know. And, um, you know, I judged about were there any kids at the church if the choir was good or not. If there's kids that I could play with, then the choir was great. <laughs> there was no kids, we just had to sit there and look, and the choir was white. But, <laughs> but no matter what, she knew how to get it out of them. And I just tagged along till I could start playing drums with her, and she put my little three-piece in, in the uh, trunk, and I would go and just play drums with her. And that's how I started. That's awesome. I definitely didn't know that. Um, but I think it's really cool, like, her having the ability to travel around Detroit and really just see different places and be able to communicate with people because I don't know of anyone that's doing that right now and the city could definitely use it. Um, I don't know how much you've been able to come home and visit, but the city definitely needs that spiritual connection again. Um, so what are some of the things that Detroit did specifically to influence your career? Well, it's number one, like I said, um, we were involved in church from the first church I ever went to that I can remember was um, Morning Star Baptist Church in Mount Clemens, Michigan. And uh, then my uncle had a church out there uh, on Quinn Road in Mount Clemens called Bethlehem Temple Apostolic. And I have been in churches the whole time, so choirs and just the whole nine, you know, uh, has been my, my thing. Um, then this is Motown, okay? My mom was not the kind of mother that said you can't listen to but this music here. She let me listen to, she raised us on Stevie and Aretha, um, Temptations. Uh, and don't y'all be tripping, yeah, it's Temptations. <laughs> uh, uh, and so I, I grew on from there to grow into the dramatics and, and, and a lot of different musical genres because music was more safe back then than what they talked about. Uh, Smokey Robinson, uh, just the whole Motown era, and I grew up with that, and, you know. Then when the boys jumped on the scene, my mother said, you know, listen to this little boy. You could probably sing like him if you open your mouth. I didn't like singing because I was shy, but it was a Jackson 5, and she bought me the first little thing, and I put it in my clothes and play, and I listened to it over and over again, and uh, then music just became a way of life, you know, just Mumford High School. You know, my, all my teachers in elementary and, and, and middle school, Mr. Brooks and different ones. Man, I just, Mrs. Alice, Alice Allen, taught me how to read music and, uh, and then just music, 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 just music. We would go all the musicals around here. We would go to Bailey Cathedral, which is the main one. But we would travel all over the city. We would do tours all over the city. We would follow these guys called the testimonials. You know them later on to become the Winans, and we followed them everywhere. They had a big old earth, wind, and fire, 70-piece band, like, and they was just singing. And then when they made it, I remember on Finkel Avenue, I was coming home, and uh, Brother Bill, the gospel DJ, was playing this song, and he played it, and it was Restoration. He said, these are the Winans, the Winans. I'm like, who is that? Winans. And next thing I know, you know, when I heard that sound, I was on Greenfield. I know right where I was that night, getting off work. Um, Greenfield and Finkel Avenue, right next to the fire station. And I heard that sound come across and it captured me. Had an old raggedy man in Carlo and I turned it up and I was like, this is what I want to do. Some people made it. And this is what I want to do to tell people about the Lord. Never really wanted to be an artist. But I didn't care about being a recording artist but I just wanted to tell people about the Lord. I felt that thing in that side of me. And how could I do it? I'm not a preacher, I'm not a this, I'm not a that, but 
if you listen to me, I'll write a song about it. And I'll tell you that way. So that changed my life. Clark Sisters Commission is, 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 a, is a clone of the Clark Sisters. And we just took it to a different level for brothers. So it's, this is Detroit, man. This is my life, right? Here. This is it. No Detroit, no Fred. Thomas Whitfield. Just the litany of people. RMJ Studios on Ro Rosemont and Six Mile. Thomas Whitfield was nice enough to let me sit in and and I was one of those guys that just kept it chill. I took an, um, a garbage can and I took it outside and I cleaned it out and turned it upside down and sat in a cubby hole between the tape machine and the effects rack so that I wouldn't make no noise. And I just didn't want him to let me, um, to kick me out. So I sat there and he was real cool. I didn't say nothing, but I asked God, how does he think? How does he think? And I went through all of that. So Detroit is, is it for me. I could just, man, go on and on and on and on. But this is home. Well, we love you. We got several questions asking, when are you moving back? <laughs> we got we got a couple of questions. We got, when is Fred moving back home? We got, is Fred coming to Fresno, California? We got, uh, is Fred uh, going to be doing any concerts? And can I have free tickets? And we're like, no, not asking Fred to give me free tickets. But you can come out later and see Fred at 9 p.m. at Word of Faith tonight. That's the Southfield location. We're going to be celebrating for New Year's Eve, and we would love to see you guys there. We're not going to keep you too much longer, Fred. We thank you so much for just taking some time and speaking with us, and we can't wait to see you perform later. Well, I'm glad to be at the Faith. I'm glad to be at Word of Faith. WOF. I'm here, right? That's right. How is it? What's the symbol? WOF. <laughs> WOF. But uh, I got to give a shout out. One of the things, I, I really did cut my teeth at Greater Grace Temple with Bishop David Ellis and playing over in that corner. Um, just so many churches. Uh, Bishop Merritt, you know, doing things with him outside, doing stuff out in the street. So many churches and so many people. And I'm glad to be here at Word of Faith to hang out and let's bring this party out right. Let's go into the new year focused 2020. That's what we're going to do, right? 2020 vision, yes. Amen. Amen.